I'm Elmer. And I'm Vanita. I want to welcome you today to Front Porch Friday. Uh, with National Preparedness Week going on in September, we want to talk to you about when communications go down. Most of us often rely on our cell phones here for communication. We get our news, we get our information, we share updates, we socialize with the cell phones. Uh, during the event of a disaster or an emergency, the um, phones can be limited. Uh, this is part of the plan um, for the emergency plan for the government that allows first responders and police and fire to be able to utilize the phone system for emergencies only, which leaves you with your family only option of texting or maybe even no service at all. So <clears throat> one of the great options that you can go for is amateur radio. As you can see here, I've got my uh, main go box that it stays in my emergency operations center or it can be transported to a disaster site. You watched earlier this week as our son and me put in the ham radio into our mobile uh, uh, mobile radio into our Wrangler TJ. To get your ham radio license, it's fairly simple. It's just get the AWRL book, uh, ham radio. This is a fifth edition, so you want to make sure you get the fifth edition, which is for the current test. Uh, paying your fees, which in the budget about $150 for fees, books, and to, um, to get your license, the FCC uh, payment fee. Um, and, of course, with this one, you can get a small handheld two-meter rig. You don't have to get nothing fancy like this, but getting a small two-meter rig can get you on the air with your license. Uh, there's repeaters in the area, and most of the times the repeaters are going to be busy. They could, this can work simplex. I've tested this with a power outage at ground level, and I've talked to a community about six miles away. So depending on everything, you could turn around and get a, get your communication through. It's a surefire, time-tested way of an emergency disaster. There's groups such as Amateur Radio Emergency Services that can refine your results and help you build your shack. There's other ham radio operators that, such as myself that's willing to help uh, you get your foot in the ham radio. <coughs> also, you want to make a plan with your children. Um, you want uh, to discuss when they need to call, um, where to call, who to call, um, what means if they should call or if they should text you. Um, also, if cell phones do happen, uh, if, if cell phones aren't working, um, you want to also keep a list of the telephone numbers because guess what? I don't memorize numbers. And so you want to keep a list of those telephone numbers so that you can call your child some type of way and get in touch with them. Also, you want to um, talk with them about different meeting places. Um, you know, have more than one meeting place. Uh, if they're at school, you know, um, in case they can't come home, you know, have us tell them where they can go uh, in case they have to run in there to be safe, whether it's a relative's home or a friend's home or a store. You know, that information you need to know and keep a record of. Trust me, you do not want to be in a position where you have to leave the flock to go out and find one of your kids and you have no idea where they're at. So be sure that you keep a list of telephone numbers, uh, talk to your children about where to go in case of an emergency if they cannot get home. And <clears throat> we all have fa family members that are seasoned. Um, that don't want to get the ham radio license. Maybe your kid's one of these kids that are just the digital dans that just turn around and want to just play with their phone. They don't want to interest in ham radio. One of the easiest options is to um, get a small GMRS radio. These run about between sixty and a hundred dollars and if you want to you can pay the seventy dollars to get the high power license to operate it on the um, um, GMRS channel, the upper GMRS channels. and um, it's a great option for the elderly. Maybe you got a neighbor next door. These don't have a lot of range. You have about a range of about a mile in a good area of the city. Um, most likely they're going to be about a half a mile, maybe a couple blocks radius at the most in the urban environment. Uh, one of the things that can happen is you have an elderly neighbor next door that allows you to communicate with them. Uh, simple power goes out in the middle of winter. Okay, or middle of winter it's snowstorm you still have power but you don't want them trekking over they need something you can turn this radio on to cha whatever channel you want they could be on that channel and 
you can turn around and communicate with them. They could go, hey, I need you to come over and get something off the shelf for me, or hey, uh, you know, I'm having an episode over here. I'm having some kind of an emergency over here. So it's always a great thing. These are a cheap, affordable option uh, if you don't want to have a communication. Another one is that you could get a CB radio. Uh, CB radios were around. They used to have to have a license that was eliminated in the 70s. The problem with the CBs, though, is everybody on, is on them, and it's not always a family-friendly conversation. Uh, if your kids, you want your kids learning curse words, is a great way is on a CB. It's, a, it's against FCC rules, but it happens. So that's the best last resort is getting a CB radio. But there are so many options for communications when the communications go down that you could turn around and make a, you know, make communications happen. Like Vanita said, have a plan with your family. Who to call, what channels to be on if you have radios. You know, even if you could throw one of these radios in the kid's backpack, teachers aren't going to turn around and bother with it. They know to turn it on and start listening. You know, even the, and the beautiful part of ham radio operators is there's no age limit. You, we've had it, kids as young as four years old getting their license. So it's not even an age um, issue with the radio. So you always want to build up a backup communication plan especially with the way weather is now and the times are and just the general way the world's going. You definitely want to always not rely on just one source and putting your eggs in one basket in the cell phone. Yes. So, you know, today I hope we give you some good options, some good tips and some good tricks uh, to be able to start getting communications. If you want to get your radio license, check out the ARRL, American Radio Relay League. Just type into Google. You, they can help you with more than what I can do on this video. We're just giving some food for thought for front porch, our Front Porch Friday. We want to thank you for uh, um, tuning in and subscribing. We want to say thank you to all our subscribers that have helped us grow so far and people have watched us. And with that, we want to say stay healthy and stay, and stay blessed. blessed.